Edwina brought her friend, Louie. Yeah, and Louie is... That's what I look at when I talk, is I look at Louie. Louie goes way back. <laughs> ten yeah. years. It has been ten years. We came here in 09. Yeah, ten years ago. So when I, when I talk, I talk to Louie. I work in a very unorthodox way. I will take and I'll start painting without any guidelines, any uh, pencil guidelines on my paper. And I'll just proceed by painting with shapes. When you paint with shapes, you ignore the line. And uh, uh, all we need to do is just put our shapes together. It's like a big puzzle. I'm gonna try and uh, paint heat, wind, humidity, and just the wonderful smell of, a, of of the tropics. Okay, this is a scene from down in the, uh, the, the Florida Keys. I worked down in the Keys for quite a bit and uh, this is one of the scenes from down around Marathon. What I was wanting to do is I was wanting to show the wonderful cloud formations along with the heat and the humidity and the wonderful palm trees. The one I'll be doing is from down around Ocean Reef which is north of uh, Key Largo down in the Keys. So, uh, and there are all sorts of different uh, uh, ways you can go about painting uh, beach scenes. Here's one with a very, very hot, hot sky. Uh, we'll be doing this this afternoon, but uh, not this scene, but this type of a painting. And, um, but this morning's will be a blue sky. But we're gonna try and get the, get the flavor of, of the ocean and of the beach scenes. Uh, I love palm trees. Palm trees are my most uh, favorite tree. And then you got all sorts of people, and then you got the catamarans and the sails and everything else, and the tides and everything. So, okay. Now, there are all sorts of different uh, beach scenes or water scenes, harbor scenes. This is a scene from uh, England. It's a harbor scene. But here, once again, it still deals with, uh, with the temperature, the humidity, everything else associated with, with water. Uh, except this is a harbor scene. These are fishing boats. But it has a nice white feel to it. This nice white big area here is very exciting to me. And as I go about doing these, I will um, um, paint them very quickly and then I'll drop back and I'll start putting some secondary and some, some uh, very, very dark areas once I get the painting established with my big shapes. Okay, okay I was uh, teaching in um, California last year. And these are a couple I did around San Francisco. This is from China Point. It's on uh, the other side of the Golden Gate Bridge from San Francisco side. And it really has a nice feel to it. Um, I love the feel of the sails blowing in the wind and the real colorful markings on the sails and also to the clouds. And I had a very, very exciting uh, backdrop here. I had the Golden Gate Bridge. So um, there's lots of ways you can go about these beach scenes. But uh, we're going to treat the water, we're going to treat everything the same. Regardless of where you're at, you can paint anything no matter where you're at. Okay, here's another one. This is from the Golden Gate. This is from the Presidio side. And uh, I just enjoy that, that viewpoint of the, looking up underneath the bridge. And then the, the sailboats coming across here. The water was very choppy. And so it was a choppy ride for whoever was in these boats. Okay, this is uh, what we will be concentrating on today. Here's an example. As you can look up here, and you can look here and here. These are from uh, Florida Keys. In 2017, I was needing some reference material to do a demonstration. So what I did is I concentrated on doing some quick thumbnail sketches here. These are done very quickly, and basically I made them up from images that have been in my mind since I was down there. I was not down there at the time. I think I was uh, somewhere, I, it was somewhere in the interior of America. And, I can't, and they wanted beach scenes, so I, can't, I drew these very quickly the night before. These are just quick ideas. This is how I was taught in the 70s and the 80s, is, is uh, artists should do very, very simple, um, uh, quick sketches. They're called thumbnails, okay? And it's just for the size of them. And, uh, but you can get a lot of information involved in all of these, okay? Once I have this down, then what I, what I do is I go into my larger sketchbook here and I will um, blow them up. I'll blow these up 
So the first one, which is this painting here, is this sketch right here, okay? And this one here is, is this sketch here. So what I'm doing is I'm making a series of these uh, um, quick sketches here. And I have four at home. Well, I have two here or three here, and then I have one at home. So this one I'll be painting for you this morning will be the fifth one, and, and it should complete my series. Um, this will be the design on it right here. It's a very exciting view of some catamarans that were just um, uh, sailed right up on the beach, and they have their sails still up, and then the low tides come out, and uh, the water recedes, and then they're left sitting on the beach, and those people be walking along. But what I really want to concentrate on today is not only the subject matter of the boats and the trees, and but it's the cloud formations. I was down working in uh, uh, Miami for the Miami Watercolor Society, and one of the students said that um, um, uh, we were painting Colorado Mountains, of all places down in Miami. And uh, one person said, well, Miami's mountains are their cloud formations. And uh, all week long, I, that was in the back of my mind whenever I would look at the cloud formations. And there were some magnificent cloud formations down in, down in the Keys, down in Miami, southern Florida. This will be my starting point. This is my sketch that I will be working off of. I have information that will take me 90% of the way through the painting. The last 10% of the painting will be left up to me to judge where the final darks, the final little areas that I tweak to make it all, all pop. I, I like to put my drawings, I like to cover them because I put it right here on my desk and I like to keep my, my drawings nice and fresh. So I put it in a plastic sack here and I'll set it right there. Okay, okay. I'll be using American Journey watercolors. I find that they are very, very adaptable to no matter what you're painting. And what I like about them is not only the quality of the paint, but the big 37 millimeter tubes. I'll be using Arches 140 Rough Paper Natural. It has a very nice grit to it and it has a nice uh, deckled edge. When I scrape the brush along the edge of the clouds and stuff, you'll see little areas of white that are left under the paper without any paint on and then the paint will just be grabbed by the very top of the texture of the paper. So, um, and I like a nice big sheet. And as I stated before, I do not sketch on my paper. I have found that the minute you put a line on your page, is the minute you lock that shape in. I want to be able to be able to move the shape either one way or another as, as the painting progresses. If something happens that I'm not counting on, but something that's neat, it's called watercolor magic, uh, I will go with it and I'll see it to the completion because I can always come back and start at this point again. But what I like to do is I do not like to set every step I'm going to do in cement or in stone, as they say. I like to have a little leeway because you never know what's going to happen once you start painting. Um, uh, painting is, uh, is, a, is a very private thing to me and um, uh, it's a very special thing to me. I, um, um, it's the only, about it, the only thing I'm good at is, is painting. So uh, I like to uh, start with a fresh paper. I like to start with my palette. This is a Frank Webb palette can be purchased at the store. And it's made for a big brush. It has no wells in it. So I can run this big two inch brush. I'll paint the majority of the painting with this two inch brush. And uh, these are the brushes that I'll be using for this painting right here. And try not to get, as it was taught to me years ago by Robert E. Wood, don't get in the lazy brush habit, okay? Have three or four or five different size brushes that, that you can use in your painting so you can get irregular shapes. You don't get, if you use just one brush, you get, you get the shapes that you can only get from one brush. But if you use a round brush and a flat brush and a rigger brush, you can get all sorts of different line weights. You can get all sorts of patterns by using the, the brush. So um, I like to start with a big, uh, this is a tsunami brush that's no longer in uh, for sale, but I've been using it for, for years now. It's a cheap Joe brush. Uh, it's been discontinued. But I'll start immediately. I'll come in here with um, uh, cobalt blue. And as you can see, my, my colors are, are fresh right out of the tube. If you have uh, uh, hard paint in your palette, 
well before you paint, squeeze the fresh paint right over the hard, the, the hard area in your palette. And then by the time you use the, by the time you use the fresh paint, then the, the old should be energized. But if you use hard paints, if your paints are hard in your palette, you're going to use so much water, you're going to get nothing but half tones and mud. So uh, I always start out each day by squeezing fresh paint into the palette, and I get some very, very nice results that way. I want the paint to go on the page correct the first time. And that's a very difficult thing to do because the way I paint, I will throw in my, my areas of color and then I'll leave them alone. Once, once they're established, I will leave them alone. I will not go back in and layer over the top of them. I try not to. Now, when I put the light source on, I will have to glaze over certain areas. But uh, I like to keep the painting process as, as fresh as possible. So, okay, here we go. Holding the brush like a shovel, like this. Make a statement. If you're going to make a statement in watercolor painting, make a good one. I'll come down here, I'll soften this edge here. There are always hard, soft edges in, in uh, the tropics. Okay, just start and soften it up there. What I'm doing is I'm using the side of the brush. It has, no, it has a little bit of value on it, but what I'm doing is I'm just kind of running it down here like this. Okay, let's come down here. I talk to myself every now and then when I paint. Uh-oh, I had some red there, but that's okay. Okay, going by my sketch, I see I want to come down here and I want to come like this. I want to have some nice big clouds over here. Okay, go back into it. Okay. Let's start softening some edges here. Let's soften that edge. Let's do that one. Okay, you can soften this edge here. That one. We can come up here and we can soften a little bit of that. I like that, like that, like this here. Okay, now what I'll do right now is I'll come in with some darker paint, heavier paint. And I used uh, a cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, and cab, cab red. That'll make a nice neutral. Now, if you're going into a wet area, you've already established your shape and you're going into a wet area with darker color, and the, and the first application of paint is still wet on your paper, you have to have less water content in the second application of paint. So you, you mix your, in your palette here and on your brush, you bring it over to the sponge and you just set it there and that takes all the excess water out of it and it just leaves nothing but pigment. Okay, and I'll let that just like that. I don't want to cover up everything that I did uh, with this bright. Now, see there's a chunk there. I need to get that out of there, okay. That was comes from picking up color here and, it, and it's not liquefied in your brush. And so we'll do that. Okay, I can come over. I can still keep, and it'll be moving here. It'll move quite a bit here. We can even come in with some more, some heavier stuff in certain areas and just see what it'll do. Who knows what this stuff will do? You just have to just see. Everything works different. Now also too, what you might want to do in this situation here is to pull that up. You see that paint that's right there, you need to pull that up and you need to wipe that off. And you just need to reclip it that way. Because what will happen if I had left that there, when it dried, it would siphon that back here and make a big watermark here. I don't want that. When I use all the dark blues and everything, it, it, the pigment sticks, it's good pigment, it sticks in the brush. So I want, I'm going to go to all my warm colors, my reds and my yellows, dip it like that. Okay, now we're ready to go here. Okay. I'll come over here. Let's start with orange and red. Those will be part of my sails here. Okay, okay. And there's a great, I have one right here. And it comes, these are catamarans that are just run up on the beach with their sails still out. I do not know the correct term for that, but anyway, 
I'll just do this. Okay, what I want is I want a real kind of hazy look. Okay, I'll set that in there like that and bring that down according to my sketch there. Like that. Okay, I might have come down a little too far, but that'll work. I can always do that. While that's still wet, I'll come in here with some heavier reds and I'll put it over the top. Oh, I like that. Then I'll come back here and I'll soften it. Come in like that. Okay, cool. That'll work. Now I have one more right back here under the sail back here. And what the, let's see what colors did I use up here? I could use a turquoise right here. Turquoise sail right here. This is Andrew's turquoise and the American Journey paints. And I come over here. It's a wonderful color, like that. And then down at the very end, like that. Now, what I'll do is I need to soften this here. I need to bring this down. This has to be almost a straight line right here. You see I dropped that. There's a water drop there, and it will make a blossom. So I need to come in and do that. This is still moving. This paint here is still moving. Over in here is still wet. You can tell by the shine on, on everything. Okay, I'll come over here and I want to start putting in the vegetation, the trees, the palm trees and all the vegetation around. Just pick up whatever's in there. And we come up here and we just start making some tree shapes. We can start bringing these down like this. Come over and get some different color here and just kind of come in here like this. And I really want to have this really loose. And we can get some, some nice big vegetation here like that. Well, I have, still have some of this. There's, uh, I see in my sketch there's some vegetation sticking through here, coming through right there. So I'll come over here and I'll just, just start softening it up. We want things to just kind of blend into each other. Let's just soften that and let them run. I like to watch the colors collide, like this little area right here. This green is coming in here. This is a complement of red, the green is. And it's coming in, it's making some nice neutral mixes as it's going on there, okay? And then just keep on running this down the coastline here. Okay, what we got here? These are some. This is a coastline that keeps going out. I can put, if I wanted to, I can put some little, I have to go to a smaller brush, some trees out here. For palm trees, you just take your brush and hold it like this and just flick it like that. It'll make some very, very nice shapes with it. Okay, usually there's all sorts of palm fronds and stuff hanging down into here so we do that just come over here using a big brush again and coming over and now what i want to do is i want to establish this point here okay and i want to continue on down here like this and i want to make this skyline right here this is now come here there's my horizon line right there and just move it into your puddle here in the middle of your palette this is for low tide like that and then to come up and I want to go here like this, and I want to go like this. And then I'll go back up into this color I had for the water. And we'll get this established very, very quickly here. And just make a very, very, very interesting shape here. I'll leave some of the white of the paper for like the foam that comes up on, on the beach when the tides come in. There we go. Okay. Start off with a basic shape of it here. And then we can come in here and we can kind of enhance it a little bit. Okay, I have, got, I have got the painting laid in. All my shapes are in. Now I just have to start refining my different shapes. I'll come back up, I'll start working up into the area of the trees. And in the meantime, that will leave this um, areas down here, time to dry. I'm wiping this all off of here because I do not want blossoms to come up. Okay, now look at this here. See the sponge here? All that water would have been on my paper if I hadn't used that sponge in conjunction with my painting. Because as you notice, I keep coming over and I, and I touch the brush to here. 
and uh, it uh, takes all the excess water out of my uh, so okay let's come into some really really dark green thalo uh, Joe's green with quinacridone burnt sienna use that brush the way it's supposed to be used I'll come up and I'll soften some of these up here and continuing on down through here we can just work our way down through here everything's a darker value going over this so we can just kind of make some really some interesting shapes coming down through here we can put that there like that we can come over here my nautical terms are not the best so bear with me on this sir. we have a tree trunk here we can have a couple of them come up in here this will all be covered up with a nice dark shadow here but for right now I need it just like that That'll work. I don't want to do too much over here because it'll pull the thunder from my center of interest which is right in here so okay going back here <clears throat> I can use this uh, pseudo squirrel brush from Cheap Joe's it makes a very very nice palm fronds just come up and just twist it just like that you twist them they have a way of growing of getting much bigger than they are I always like to use this brush and just hold it with my finger like this and then when I get up here I'll just twist it just twist it you can make some very very nice shapes with it that'll work and down here I see I can put some more vegetation in here I don't want to do too much we can soften along I can come in here with some brown just some straight quinacridone burnt orange and just kind of put that there and maybe soften a little bit up and run it up there like that your first application of paint is usually your best so my first application is all this 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 the second applications are darker okay what I need to do now is I need to establish some figure shapes and how I will do that is I'll clean my palette off here by continually keep cleaning my palette I keep my my paint that I'm going to be putting on my page very 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 clean we want our paintings to be clean we want our paintings to be fresh we want our paintings to to basically feel like we're right there okay the more times you go over an area of color with another color it gets a little murkier gets a little murkier so I like to try and get it as quickly and as pos as fast as possible lay it on lay it into the page and just let it do its thing this white shape here that will make a very very nice figure all I have to do is just put some britches on him like that and while I have this red I'll just run it up through some more we can just take and we can just put uh, we can have one here and we can have one here and we can have one there and we can come up here with different colors I just make little dots Let's just put some little dots just like that, okay? The figures will be very, very small. You can put the head on right there. I'll come in later when I put my um, uh, light source on here. And I'll do negative painting behind these figures to make them pop out. But for right now, I'm just establishing where they are in the composition. Okay, there we go. And we can run some more up in here. We can run some there, there, okay? And some here just like that. As you can see in these, I, I have three or four different kinds, uh, different shapes, different colors. Um, there are all sorts of different colors you can use for clothing and such. And, uh, but just, uh, have, just have fun with it. Look how nice that, that just shows up right there. Okay, let's see. Let's run a light source on this right now. As you can see from here, in my sketch my light source is coming from the left hand side here and it's going to cover up most of these sails here and it'll leave this sail here pretty much alone I will have some on the inside here and um, uh, along the sail coming down but mainly most of this will be covered up 
in a, in a heavy dark, what is this dark blue that comes through the page here. And you have to do three things. So you have to clean your palette, which I'm doing here. Just take these sponges and just put them here. I like to take a squirt bottle and squirt it. I want this glaze to be as pristine a color as I can get. I don't want to have any contamination of any other color in my palette. So I will just do this. I'll just take the extra time. It's time consuming, but the results I get will be well worth the time. We're going to have some clean water here. If I use that old water, it would um, uh, contaminate with all the color that was in it. Now, the last thing I have to do is I have to dry the paper here. That's a nice blossom there. I really like that. As you notice, my board's on an angle a little bit because I want gravity to help move the color. If I have a little bit of tilt to my board, well then gravity will start moving things down. And uh, if, you, if you paint flat on your desk, you're gonna have a hard time. Uh, so you might wanna put a little elevation on your board. And look at what this has done here. When I put the supposedly trunk, I'm gonna put in here once it gets, I put my light source on here. And there is a tree trunk here in too. I'm just gonna go over right over the top of all of this with a, with a, with a glaze. Okay, coming over here to this brush here. I use a silver black velvet one and a half inch <clears throat> flat for this only. I carry this brush just for this step in my painting. Um, it's a wonderfully old brush. Uh, it's so thick right here and it'll hold a lot of paint. That's why my uh, uh, Tsunami is so good. If you want to look at brushes, you, know, you need to look at them from the side view to see how bulky they are. The bulky they are here, the more water they will hold. On this step, I will use cobalt blue and permanent rose. I need a neutral wash to nullify some of the color and to push some of the color back. And basically all you're doing with um, uh, this, this step is we're editing. What we're doing is we're editing areas in our paintings that we do not want the public to concentrate on, okay? If I have a white area and a lot of nice color out here, it's gonna pull the viewer's eye off, the, off my center of interest, which is going to be right, maintained right in this little area here. So, so if you can remember that in, in your painting, you always wanna strive for a center of interest in your painting. That way, uh, you do not have to finish off all, all your painting the same. If you put the same amount of detail everywhere, then where does the viewer's eye look? Okay, in this scene up here, I want to have the viewer concentrate on this little area right here. And so I nullify this area and all this area here with a shadow. And that's basically what I'm gonna be doing here. I did the same thing over here. I've run, a, see I'll leave a little bit of the green that I already have established in here and it'll make a nice contrast there with all this coolness that's surrounding it. And, and these areas of white that I have here uh, most of them I'll run over with a glaze and it will become a cool here. And I really like the warmth and then the cool, the warmth and then the cool. It's, it's nice to play things back and forth against each other, yin yang, push or pull. Now what will happen here is uh, I will go into the sails, the very first thing. I'm going to come back into this right here and I'm going to work first. I'm going to work out and this will be the last thing I do is put this on down here. So I'm going to come over here. I think that'll work. Now let's, uh, let's go here. Okay, let's come down. And this is where we start putting. Okay, we'll come over here. We'll pick this up. I need to darken it up a little bit. I can see that. Okay, come over here and just come over. I wanna leave some of that. I wanna leave some of this but I want to cover some of it up. There we go. Oh yeah, look at that. Whew! It's working, Louie. Oh yeah, check this out. Okay, we're gonna go right over the top of these people. Does that scare you? Going over the top of these? It shouldn't, it's just a painting. And let's get a big bunch here. I've gotta go completely across the page here. There. 
Oh yeah, now it has mood. Look at the mood on that. Okay, like this. Okay, coming on here. I got a few little areas here. I need to come in. Oop, that's too dark. I need to get some blue in that. Thin it down a little. And here like this. I can put a little palm fronds up here if I want. I'll come up and put some dark around it. I'll come over here and maybe pull into there. I need to do something right in here. Here, I need to. Oop, I covered up all my people, but that's okay. That would be a little shadow there, a little shadow here. There, I think that'll work. There, that'll work. Something like that. I can come up and maybe soften a few of those little edges here. When I start getting cute like this is when I have some trouble. So it's best just to leave it alone. Okay, coming back here. I want to pull that up again. I want to get all that glaze off of here. I'm still concerned about the, the blossoms. And now we'll have two, two, two more steps involved here. We will take some dark paint and we'll come in here and we'll start picking out little areas that need a little tweaking. Like in this here, we tweak the figures here. There's all these little areas up here that need a little bit of darks up in here and especially down here in the, in the way in the middle ground here, this, these trees back in here. I'm going to come in and tweak because my center of interest is right in here. Right in there. So what I'll need to do now is I need to put a hair dryer on it. I don't know if I like that or not. So I'll take my brush and I'll do this. There, I like that much better. I didn't want that shape going all the way across the same size. And I wanted it to deadhead it off here on the mast here. Okay, cool. Now watch how this is all going to start drying very lightly. The colors underneath will start to appear. I want this almost dry. Yeah, look what's happening here. It's starting to become one unit, one cohesive unit, the whole painting. Watch these figures start emerging. And this one little figure here is gonna, that's gonna be my dandy one there. Okay, I'll take a number 12 round. A number 12 round, it's a pseudo squirrel brush, the 12, as you can see, I've used it quite extensively, but it's, once you break in down to the wood of here, I really like it, because it becomes, it sits right in my hand here. And so it's just my brush. Okay, here we go. I'll do that, a little green, a little Joe's green with a little quinacridone burnt orange. Okay, see this one here? We can come up here and we can start putting some darks on. It, won't, it doesn't take much. I don't like to do too much. Something like that might, might, might work very nicely. Coming over here, we can come in here with this. As I stated earlier, your first application of paint is usually your best. Let's not uh, mess with it too much. You can use strictly brown paint if you want. Here, we can come up like this, coming around like that, coming down here like this, coming over here. I like to work quickly. I like to have my brush five steps ahead of my mind. That way, I'm not second guessing myself. The minute you start second guessing yourself in painting is the minute your, your painting is going to bomb out. You're not going to be able to do very well. Make a statement whether it's right or wrong. Make it. Okay. I will go to a one inch flat for these bigger areas here, down around here. I want to cover them quickly. And look what this happens to this area. You put a nice dark, look how it pushes this back, which was at the time we put it on the darkest part of the painting, but now it becomes a, a, an intermediate color here. What am I doing? Um, I'm painting. Um, I really can't explain what I'm doing because I'm just doing it intuitively. I'm just having fun. This goes again to, I'm just letting it all out. The minute I start thinking about what I'm doing is the minute I'll ruin the painting. To finish this off, we're gonna do this, a little bit of work on the figures and then that's it. We'll come over here. And that, that figure there is very nice. That'll work out nice. Watch that. that. Doesn't seem to want to. Come on now. 
Yeah, that'll work. We'll put some legs on that one, put some arms on that one. And then we'll come back. There, that looks pretty good. I, I think when in doubt, just don't do anything at all. Okay, last but not least, we need to put a we need to put a signature on it. Your signature is a piece of paint, it becomes a design factor. Look through the composition here and see where you need some paint. I'm going to put it right here. If I put it out here, uh, that's the first thing people would notice. So I'm going to put it right in here. I need something right in here, and I think my signature will work perfectly there. If you have signature status, put it on. That's the National Watercolor Society. Yeah, let's see. I could do all sorts of things with this here, but you know, I'm thinking I'm just going to leave it alone. Um, when in doubt, do not do anything. Okay, see that paint drop there? We can make a bird out of it. Make two birds. Birds flying groups, so. And there's plenty of birds on the, on the ocean. I'll leave it alone, Frank. That ought to do it. We can always have some uprights in here like that. But I think all in all, I think it's, um, it's completed. We'll put a mat on it here. <coughs> and see what it looks like. It's always nice to have a mat around, around your work. It hides at it that raw edge there and everything so so all in all on this um, when you paint be happy think good thoughts the actual process of painting is is uh, the, the best you get out of it is is the actual process of application of paint on the page and uh, and in closing I would like to thank Cheap Joe Art Supply for the opportunity to reach out to everybody and for their kind hospitality at the workshop here. Thank you very much. Well, this is Frank Francais. I'm Joe from Cheap Joe's. And this guy's been a friend of mine for many, many years. 11 years. years. 11 years. Yeah. And his work is just fantastic. He's a great teacher. And Frank, we're so honored to have you here. Thank you, Joe. Um, uh, the highlight of my painting career was in 2008 when I taught for you for the first time. Yeah. Uh, and he asked me to come on board. Yeah. And be an He's ambassador. part of our family now, you see. So we thank you for all you do for us, Frank. Thank you, Joe. Sure do. And thank you. And every watercolor artist in America, thank you. Well, 